What's up, guys? I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, I had to watch watch the ending of the Vols game. So, um, you know, I usually, if we were playing some trash team, I probably would just turn it off. But um, we were uh, we were playing Kentucky, and uh, I always like to make sure uh, we win against those guys. So let me turn this down just a little bit. Whoa, barking spider. Oh, gosh. Whoa, shouldn't I eat Wendy's before I come up on here? Yikes. So anyway, uh, we need to do a giveaway uh, from last week. So let me get this thing figured out real quick. And uh, we'll get that super sick sack from last week. We'll, we'll get that thing given away real quick. If you guys have just a little patience with me. Hope everyone's had a pretty good evening. <gasps> over here on the old comment picker let me uh, add that up here window capture let's see if we can see this thing let me move it up here uh, just a second. glad you're on better Netflix man I actually wish Bateman was on Netflix I don't know if that ever happened but it would be kind of funny uh, if it was. There we go. Alright, we got comment picker pulled up here. And, uh, let's, uh, I already just copied the URL for the, uh, giveaway. I'm gonna knock this out of my way on the worst about forgetting about these things. So, um, YouTube random comment picker. So, on the last stream I did, uh, which was this week, actually, Decided to give away a six cent super six sack. You had to comment on the video. So put that in there. Uh, we want to filter duplicate users and, you know, include replies to comments. Sometimes that happens. All right, let's get these YouTube comments. There was quite a, quite a few. I knew there was almost 200, 182. All right, let's get this winner. The winner is Chris G4420. Says, I'm looking forward to throwing the Swank 77 once this ice melts. Stay smooth, Kevin. Chris G4420, if you are watching, uh, let me know. Uh, after the video airs, comment. Get a hold of me somehow on Instagram, whatever. And uh, I'll get you your six cent super six sack. So. Yes, the Vols did win, Don G. I think by 11. Uh, let's see. What's up, Hunter? Um, yes, I'm doing doing good. Uh, I'm trying to answer some questions. Still finding the OSG's got 23. Whoa. Uh, David, I'm not sure if Lemus is going to update the NRX or not. I'd love to see him do it. Uh, hold on. Dude, it's way too cold out here tonight. You don't have... You got shorts on, shirt, and you go inside, okay? You can come on tomorrow. And you got marker all over your face. Brooks, uh, Bateman Jr.'s sister marked on his face so much, he looks like the crow that we're coloring today. And she got after him with a bunch of stuff, so. How many babes swim baits do you have, and would you come off one? Man, to be honest, I probably have less than three. Uh, and... I'm probably not going to come off of them, to be honest with you, because uh, I don't know if uh, Kyle and the guys are going to make too many more. I know they're having some packaging issues, so uh, kind of crazy. Um, yeah, Chris, uh, send me a message on Instagram or Facebook or something. Give me your address uh, so I can get that to you. So We only got 80 people in here tonight, man. I'm getting as unpopular as ever. Uh, it's pretty crazy. It's all good to me, though. Um, I guess since uh, another YouTuber sent me a dirty-ass text message last night and told me if I would be more professional, uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but I was pretty uh, shocking by it. And maybe that wasn't a professional thing to say. But, uh, you know, maybe he's, maybe he's right. Uh, I think I do a pretty good job on here. Uh, but So I kind of was a little taken back by that. But, you know, whatever. Um, when are all the Dobbins Champion XP rods out of stock on their uh, website? Um, 
I'm not sure. I know Gary posted on the Dobbins forum uh, that um, they're redoing some stuff on them, uh, and they were slowly going to start coming in. So, yeah, man, Debo Fishing is an awesome dude. So if people are in there watching him, I like, dude, go ahead. He is awesome and a great guy. Um, so, you know, I just joke about not having many viewers. You, you guys know that. I don't really care. So, uh, I have used this 500 DD a long time ago. It was one of the, uh, first, uh, deep crank baits from Six Cents I ever used. I really, really like that bait and I'm glad they got some newer, um, colors in there. So, uh, Ranger, uh, I have not, uh, tried it, but I like the KVD 1.5 hard knock. Matter of fact, I got order from Tackle Warehouse coming in. Uh, hopefully I got a few of those in there. They got some nice new colors in that hard knot. So, um, excited about that. And we're going, we're going to try to get that TW affiliate link, uh, going this week. So that'd be one of the best ways to support the channel is if you want to buy baits and stuff like that, uh, use my link, uh, in the description, uh, help me out. And plus you get cool baits out of it. Unfortunately, TW doesn't offer a discount code, um, I get that a lot, and uh, they just don't do that. They run so many big sales. So, um, I agree. I agree, Chuck. Uh, you know, it just kind of caught cut me off guard. Uh, to be honest, there are times when I could probably be a little bit more PC. Um, but, dude, I've been doing this, you know, streaming stuff and and whatnot for four years now, and uh, you know, obviously, I do okay. But I don't try to be a professional fisherman. I'm never going to be a professional fisherman. I'm going to be a guy, a blue collar guy that works 40 to 50 hours a week and spends my extra time doing YouTube and whatever else and try to fish as much as I can. And uh, I think I do a really good job representing the one and only true sponsor I got, which is Six Cents. And uh, I'm not going to put anything I say or do in the bad limelight. Um, so. The way I see it, not watching me very often if you want to be able to pick out bad things I do or say or tell me stuff like everyone in the fishing industry hates you and you're a fishing industry hater. Uh, no, nah, man, it ain't like that. So, uh, But I'm not going to mention their name. Uh, I have no problem with this person. I actually like them quite a bit, and uh, they just didn't like me. So maybe it was just a bad day. But we're over that, and uh, I'm excited. So... Yeah, Ryan, I agree. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes, uh, you know, people don't like the truth. They don't like opinions. That's okay. There's opinions I don't like and whatnot. I just go to be normal. And uh, here's the deal. This channel is about baits. Uh, it's about fishing baits and new baits and colors. And I like having different people on the stream. They may not be the most popular people, but I enjoy it. And I uh, I want you guys to learn something from fishing. I'm not here to uh, stroke an ego or anything like that because I always say I'm a nobody. And uh, it kind of bothered me a little bit, not going to lie. So, but we're on to a different day because guess what I got? And this makes me happy. Things that makes Bateman happy. Packages from my great friends, Tim and Andrea over there at Scottsboro Tackle Company. Um... Yeah, uh, open floor tonight, Sean Z. I'm cool with that. I uh, I want to do a spring uh, stream, like best stuff for the spring. But, dude, my bait room is such a mess. I can't even, like, walk back here. So, But, yeah, smash the thumbs up for me, whatever. I'm sorry I'm so late. Again, uh, I hate it when Tennessee plays late. I always watch. Uh, and uh, I need to give a special shout-out real quick. I don't have this stuff with me. Uh, but Scott and Brian Stuckey, great subscribers, been on the channel a long time. They sent me three, check this out. They sent me three of these. They had these custom done. They put the new Bateman logo on these tumblers, and it's awesome. They even made some special wood uh, cutting boards, which I got one with the logo I'm going to be using for my photos for Instagram. It's a nice wood grain, like laser engraved Bateman logo. They even did one for my wife. They took one and put Bateman Jr.'s photo on it, and he loves it. It's, he, he like takes it to school. 
and then he made Neely a special pink Bait Girl Junior Cup. So Scott, Brian, you guys are awesome. Uh, I'll make sure I'll throw a photo of all that stuff up on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, thank you so much for that, man. Great, great people. All right. Uh, yeah. Hunter Nixon, do I prefer flat-sided crankbaits? In the spring, absolutely. Like, if I had a choice, I'm going to throw a flat side before uh, anything else. I mean, I'll, I love a flat side, whether it's a Little John, you know, great production run flat sides, a Little John. Um, any of the balls I start throwing in the spring, I'm usually going to lean to a flat side. Now, if I'm in some dingier water, uh, fish are a little bit more aggressive, it warms up quick, I like that round E1, E2 size. Dude, that OSP Blitz, Dave, it's a good bait. I really suggest you guys, if you got a little extra money and you want to splurge on a G JDM bait, uh, get you OSP Blitz. It's a really good bait. Uh, Don G, favorite shad wrap size? I like a number seven. A number seven is just probably one of my favorite. If I'm going to get a little bit finesse here, I'll go to a number five. Um, Fritz side's great bait. I need to pick some more up. I'm probably going to make a Delaware Tackle Warehouse order this week because I'm prepping to go to Texas. You know what I mean? So, uh, so anyway, I got this nice little package from Scottsboro Tackle, but I got a new jerk bait. I don't have one of these. And uh, y'all know I had to ring the JDM guy's bell this week. He posted these. I got in his DMs real quick. Uh, this is a special run color, okay? Uh, I believe the hookup tackle is going to have some this weekend, but uh, this is a Mega Bass 110 LBO. So LBO is uh, linear bearing oscillators. Sounds really technical, uh, but what that is? Uh, so this color is called Tequila Shad. Uh, it's going to be really hard to see the pink highlight on this thing. Uh, with that TikTok light. Let's see if we can see it from the side. But, uh, it's kind of got a royal blue. I thought it was purple, but it's like a, a royal blue purple. It's kind of translucent, but I, what I like is it's got this bone, bonish color belly on it. So this is the 110 LBO. And if you see this real quick, you see this shiny part right here? A bit of focus. That's a weight transfer system. So you kind of got to, all right, see now it's on the back, it's in the butt of the bait. And then as you cast this thing, it's basically like a rearrange. Like, so when you cast, it's going to be at the very back and it's going to work its way to the front. So that is the LBO. Uh, going to be honest, my buddy, Jake Lawrence, y'all, we're going to get Jake on here. He needs to be on here for a spring instead of a ledge fishing yeah he's one of the best spring fishermen i know so that is the tequila it says gp tequila shad man this thing is it's good looking it's kind of very similar to like a pro blue meets a tennessee shad Woo, man that smoked me yeah it does have a little bit of chartreuse hue to it. it's actually almost a pink hue um pretty crazy and those hooks are sharp man i just stuck myself but uh so jake lawrence told me like he's like man you need to get some lbo's and i said really he said yeah i accidentally bought one and it was windy and he was fishing in the fall and he said dude i can cast that sucker forever uh so i want to play with it and try it and uh it might be one of those deals where hey uh might need a handful of these lbo's especially for windy days I think hookup tackle will have it chucked, but um, Tackle Warehouse does have the 110 LBOs and uh, other stuff. Joe, I have not seen uh, the hookup tackle. I'm, I was definitely hooked up. The hookup box, I'm sorry. That's pretty crazy, man. Uh, I don't know how that'd go. Off, hopefully awesome. I love Ben. Those guys at hookup tackle, amazing guys. Uh, love to get Ben on here one night to do a JDM show. Did I see Lunker's incredible finish in the first tournament? Be nice. Uh, all I'm saying is Florida can be tough, man. Um, Florida can be tough. It can humble you really quick. Uh, there were several other guys that zeroed that are really good fishermen. So, um, 
I know a lot of guys have asked me on this, and here's how I see it. You know what? Good for Lunkers TV. Uh, I'm g glad to see him actually going out there and try to do some things. Uh, you know, if he's going to fail, that's fine. If he's going to do good, that's fine too. Um, do I think he's going to be like somebody to watch out for that's possibly going to win? No. I think he can have some good solid finishes. Um, and so can many other people. Um, but that Florida tournament, man, it's a really tough uh, time. A lot of cold front going through or whatnot. So, you know, a lot of people want to hate on it. Um, I'm just going to, you know, let him do what he does. Then I'll judge uh, at the end of the season. You know what I mean? It's hard to judge a guy on his first tournament, whether he's a pro or YouTuber or what. So, what's up, Big Red Bass? Yeah, I don't know if it's uh, like his dream. Uh, I'm sure a lot of it's motivated by YouTube and getting clicks and all that. But you know what? That you know that's that's his gig, man. And uh, you know, love him or like him, it is what it is. Not going to change how I do my videos, and shouldn't change how other people do theirs. Uh, hey, man, if someone wants to pay my entry fees and give me a boat, I'll go fish the opens. I'll zero every tournament. No shame in my game. So I'd love. I mean, that's it. And, you know, be honest with you, me and other YouTubers would be like, man, you give us that entry fee money, and if we lose it, we lose it, no big deal. Um, love for that, to be in that financial position, so not going to hate on it. Dude, John Cox is fishing so many circuits this year, they're actually starting another circuit just called John Cox Gets a Fishing Break Circuit, where he goes to the tournament and they just say, hey man, you don't have to fish, you can just sleep for a few days. Just so he can get a little off time. That dude loves to fish. I'd love to see a YouTuber tournament, uh, legit uh, five fish limit style on a lake that everybody can kind of go at. And uh, I think it'd be fun. If you were to make a crankbait cutler besides jank juice, what it, would it be? Uh, man... Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Chartreuse and Blueback. It's a really good one. Uh, any kind of red in the spring. I don't know if I can make the perfect one. Um, actually, um, do the Overpala um, parrot color is really good. One more money on that one than any. So, uh, East Tennessee Fishing Expo. Darius canceled, unfortunately. What's up, Jack Mitchell? Been pushing snow, man. I'd hate to be out there uh, in Nebraska in the Midwest and it's snowing. It's got really cold here. It's like 24 degrees right now. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it, man. I've got a lot of stuff to go to the mail. I sent something off to a guy that's, you know, a week or two ago and uh, I lost it. And I threw away the tracking receipt because I'm an idiot. So uh, luckily I had doubles of this bait. So I got to get that gone the, the mail has definitely lost some things for me reverse jank juice i've never seen a purple chartreuse back it would be nasty though um best deep diver reel under a hundred dollars uh i would probably actually look uh at the let's see shimano slx doesn't hold enough line so um Michael, man, I appreciate that $99, or $9.99, I wish it was $99, $9.99 is great too, it's an excellent number, $9.99, make you holla, appreciate it, Mike, uh, thank you so much, uh, that's a good question, Be best deep diver reel under $100, if you can find, and you can find them on eBay, a Daiwa Tatula 100P, that's an amazing deep diving crankbait reel. Uh, if not, I would actually probably look at a Lose, uh, LFS. They make some 5, 6 to ones. Those are good reels. They'll hold a decent amount of line. Um, the thing is, with a deep diving crankbait reel, just my opinion, you don't need a deep, deep spool because I'm throwing 10, 12 pound fluorocarbon, maybe 14. So you really don't need a giant amount of spool because you can get a lot of the 10, 12 on there. Um, you can find some used lose BB1s, BB1 Pros under a dollar, and they're pretty tough. They're going to come back good. Uh, if you find an old school Revo winch, the blue one, dude, you found money right there. So, What's up, Spencer Whitney? 
is they're going out for Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Thanks, man, for joining in. I've always been a lose guy. I just bought a Corrado MGL. Dude, I've been thinking about it. I mean, I got a Shimano shirt on here. Uh, this I've had this. I used to be a Shimano guy through and through. I throw a lot of Daiwas now. Um, but I'm really going to make an effort to kind of diversify. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to drop some uh, Joe Biden money on a, a Bantam uh, this week before I go to Texas. And uh, probably going to get me a couple um, smaller Shimano MGLs. I love that old um, Cronarch 50. Love that small size. So. Dirk White, great question. Kevin, what is the rarest bait you have? Uh, I'm going to actually say it would be one of my Coulter cranks because they are so, so hard uh, to get a hold of. When when Norm makes them, he makes them in small batches. And I actually talked to him on the phone today. Norm Coulter is a great guy. Um, but I would say a couple of his Coulter cranks are the rarest I have. I mean, they're just hard to get. Um, I'm trying to look up here. As far as discontinued stuff, I would say that squeaky dolphin buzz bait's probably one of the harder ones to get. Um, great question, Ian. Uh, fluorocarbon, what do I use? I, I stick to Sunline for the most part. I like Sunline, Assassin, I'll use Sniper, and then I dabble in and use that canine fishing line quite a bit. It's really good. It's got some stretch. It's probably the best spinner bait line I've found in a long time. All right, LGC, JBC, 41 degree muddy water in North Carolina. Your five baits you have on deck, 41 degrees. I'll have a jig, uh, some kind of, you know, 7 16 ounce jig, uh, nice and compact. Probably something like this right here. This, this is a Dirty Jigs Luke Clawson Finesse Jig. This thing looks so good. Got that pack of Slim 3.5 on the back. Dude, this, this is... This is in my top five finesse jigs, for sure. I know old Debo likes this jig, too. And this color's called Kentucky Craw. So go have a finesse jig, 41 degree water. I'm going to have a suspending jerk bait, uh, probably a deeper diver, something like a Mega Bass Plus One. I'm going to have a Strike King Series 4 crankbait. Awesome, awesome crankbait in super, super cold water. Um... I'm going to have an underspin. Get me a six cents uh, divine underspin paired up with a swim bait on the back. Um, try to get underneath some of those suspended balls of shad. Uh, and number five, I'm going to have some kind of flat side crankbait. Maybe you get warm, get some warm uh, skies, parallel some riprap, get something like a flat 75X, or maybe even a balsa crankbait. Um, going to kind of dictate if I'm North Carolina probably go balsa dude I love the looks of that new zillion SV Sean man that thing I've never had a zillion I keep debating on getting one dude McVeigh I've got to get some more Baxter's bug uh, dirty jigs man uh, matter of fact look at this though my JDM guy sent me these I told him what color I liked, and he made a really daggum close of Baxter's bug in a random jig. So he sent me this. So this is his own jig. Really like this. Uh, medium wire hook. Kind of like a cross between the Six Sense hybrid jig and like the Canterbury jig from Dirty Jigs. Really like that. Medium grade hook in there. Going to kind of stand up. Man, this dude did a great job. Mark, if you're watching, I like the jig, man. I like the jig. So, I really like that. He said, I'll make some jigs. Tell me what you think about them. Dude, look at the paint job on the head there. That's nice. Could probably, I bet that's kind of a flipping jig. That hook's a little little heavy. New Shimano Metaniums are nice. Dude, Sean Lott is everywhere on YouTube, and Sean is an awesome dude. I've got to get him a little care package out. Uh, what happened is another subscriber won a giveaway, and they said, you know what, I don't want it. Uh, I want to give it to someone that's loyal to the channel, so they said Sean. But the problem is, most of the stuff I got, 
Sean's got. So I'm going to put him together something sneaky, a little, couple little OG baits. Yeah. Maybe throw him a rare balsa in there. But I got to get that out this week, man. Sean, I appreciate you. Do not send no ice cream money or nothing. Because um, last time you sent ice cream money, Sean, I bought my little girl a slushie and my son some ice cream. Uh-uh. That, that, that day just going crazy up in this house. So. Uh, dude, that I love the looks of that jig. Uh, I can't wait to fish it, you know. Uh, I like how it's flat down here. Matter of fact, if uh, you guys think maybe I should tell my JDM guy, hey, make me up a half a dozen of these jigs, maybe I'll just do a little giveaway from JDM guy, get a couple different colors. Dude, Pack of Slim is really good bait. Probably one of my favorite soft plastics. Who makes the best finesse jig? Uh, dude, that Dirty Jigs one's really, really good. Uh, I'm actually used to be a really big fan of the Jewel uh, Spider Jig. And, uh, dude, Santone Lures makes a really good one. And then, of course, Six Cents Finesse Jig. I like it quite a bit. Uh, I love the screw lock on there. <laughs> I hear you, Sean. I hear you. Dude, I'm... It's like, when it's a... Uh, I promise I'll turn the bedroom fan on tonight. My wife's like, Ew. What are you turning the fan on? It's like 10 degrees outside. I'm like, cuz. What's up, Bob Davis? War Eagle makes a great finesse jig as well. What's up, hook sets are free? Yep, Beast Coast. You want to get that uh, tungsten? Get the Beast Coast, man. They're good guys. I like Beast Coast. I probably need I need to have more of their stuff. I need to order some. So, Dude, we haven't even got in this box. Matter of fact, someone asked about a rare bait. Rare bait. I got a rare bait in here. This bait I'm about to show you. Y'all better not get on eBay and jack the prices up if there are any on there. I, I hardly find them on eBay. This bait, my buddy Austin Brown, shout out to Austin Brown, Lucas Oil Pro, Ranger Boats Pro, has won two, two bass boats on Kentucky Lake with this bait. I'm talking, he's won these tournaments for 30,000 plus a bass boat. He's won two of them in five years on this bait. It's a top water bait. Got to show you here. It's a top water bait. Can I get some guesses on this top water bait? It is not a vixen. Can y'all hear this? It is not a vixen. That's correct. Sean Lai is correct on that. Evergreen makes the jackhammer, but because it's distributed in the United States, they have to pay Z-Man a royalty because of the connection. So the only different there's nothing different between the JDM version and Jeff. Good guess, Jeff. Jackal Bowstick. Man, this thing is really really unique this is an awesome color too it's a tennessee shad but you see that it's actually it's like it's got a hole in here what happens is when this bait's like digging through the water water splashes through that thing it's pretty crazy y'all can hear this dude this thing is super super loud and in classic jackal fashion every time they come out with something awesome and guys start using it they discontinued it. So this is the Jackal Bow Stick, man. This has been one I've been hunting for a while. And uh, so shout out to Tim at Scottsboro Tackle when I ordered these swim baits I'm about to show you. He said, I got to throw something in special I know you've been wanting. And I said, all right. And he surprised me. So Tim, you're a good dude. Uh, I love it. Um, but it's got that awesome copper back. And it's basically a bone white, man. They'll, they'll eat, the, eat this sucker right here. But I love the noise this thing makes. Listen to that. You, uh, If you guys ever get a chance to come up to Kentucky Lake, uh, there's, a, there's a store right next to Jetta Marina in Calvert City. It's called Custom Automotive. 
And so my buddy Austin, his family, they own that. If you walk into Custom Automotive, they'll have like a little display. And it's got all their, um, so their families all race dirt cars and stuff. It's got this display with dirt cars in there. And then there's these bass fishing trophies. And in the middle of it, there's a jackal bow stick. The one that uh, Austin's won all, all those boats on. Pretty cool. And he's not ashamed to tell you that was the bait and everything. Because uh, he'll tell you, well, it's not like you can go buy them off the shelf. So... Love that bow stick. I'm going to stick her up on the wall here. But, Dustin, I checked out Mike's. I don't think uh, Darren's going to be finding any bow sticks. Uh, me and Epic Eric are going to go up there, and we're just going to bring a U-Haul and clean that place out, man. No bait flipping on my watch. My problem is when people go places like that, Dustin, and they just think anything's worth double. And I see people buying, like, common stuff and trying to flip it. And I'm like, man, that's just crazy. Go get the hard stuff. Or I talk about something on the stream, and next thing I know, there's a guy on Facebook that's uh, flipping his grandpa's tackle. So, But uh, let's see here. I missed the bull trigger. That's a really underrated bait. I've heard a lot of guys really like that bull trigger. All right, uh, let's see. All right, anyway, we got some swim baits in here from 316. So I ordered these from Scottsboro Tackle. And uh, they actually have a bunch in stock. Uh, they're hard to find the 316 Rising Suns. I checked hookup tackle. I couldn't navigate their site. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh, I'd add a cart, and they wouldn't show up in the cart. It was really crazy. So... I said, you know what, Scottsboro Tackle Company, Gunnersville, Alabama, they specialize in swim baits. They make their own swim bait. So, but this is the Rising Sun, and this is the five inch. Uh, this is a this this color right here. I love it. It's uh, I believe it's called Shad Green. They make a Shad Blue, but this is Shad Green. Um, now, love him or hate him. Uh, Mikey Ellis, the guy owns 316 swim baits. I think we're going to need a new color called the Shark, because I'm pretty sure that's just what happened. Uh, well, dude, so let me tell you, I ordered these on Wednesday night. These were at my door Thursday evening from Scottsboro Tackle. And, uh, dude, I appreciate that, but. That is shad green. I wanted to get me a good shad pattern. So the reason I got the Rising Sun uh, was because I want to put this on a weightless beast hook fishing up near the surface uh, there at Choke Canyon. I think there may be a little bit of swim bait bite going on. I can fish this around grass, up around trees, all that stuff. God, I had to, had to get me a shad imitator. Look how soft that is. The Rising Sun's an awesome bait, too. You guys have never thrown it. This bait's a whole lot bigger than a, a Big Easy, Lucas. A whole lot bigger. Big Easy's a good bait, though. This has got a true shad profile. Got that color. <laughs> Guys, I apologize. I, my wife made some chili, and uh, I think she sabotaged it. Like... I'm sorry if that was unprofessional, uh, but guys, if y'all been watching me uh, for a long time, if you got a spider, you got to step on it. Dude, check this one out. This one's called Lavender Shad. Of course, you know, it got that purple in there, but a real translucent color. And again, Choke Canyon is supposed to be really clear, so I kind of went with these clear-based uh, colors as well. What's up, Joe Don Story? I hope Ronnie Kelly's watching with you. My man, Ronnie Kelly. Not just going to Texas, guys. I'm going to fish with the Captain Ron, my man Ronnie Kelly, and uh, thought I'd bring a couple tricks. The 316 minnow is awesome, but I love that lavender. This one's gonna work good here on Kentucky Lake as well. Imitate uh, those big gizzards as well. It had to be the shark, dude. It had to be. Oh my gosh. All right. So anyway, the last color I got, I got, got three packs in here. Got me this nice 
bluegill color. I have a seven inch in this one, but these are the five inch. These look good, man. Even on the old webcam, they're looking looking fire. So one thing I do like to do to this bait is I like to dip that tail a little. This part of the tail, I love to put that uh, in chartreuse. Give it a really good bluegill look. You can see the flake in there, man. This thing is, it's solid. And that is the 316 Rising Sun. I'm going to order some more stuff from Scottsboro Tackle this week. Uh, probably some more swim baits. Um, you ever guys get a hankering? Get over there. <laughs> Sean Live, $5 make you holler for some new britches in my poor chair. I appreciate it, uh, Sean. Uh, I think I will need some new britches before the night's over. That is uh, some truth in that. All right, great question. 316 versus the Scottsboro. Uh, all right, I'll show you right here. Let's, let's do a little bait comparison. That's funny, Chris. Caleb, if you got some bow sticks, uh, you might want to put them on Facebook after the show. You might get a pretty penny for them. Uh, matter of fact, we will compare bluegill to bluegill here. So I moved a bunch of my swim baits over here, like where you guys can't see. I'll move the webcam here. TikTok, well, see, I've got these swim baits over here because they're a lot easier then up above me, which I still have a lot of stuff, so. One of these days I'll stream somewhere other than this one spot, so. All right. This is a nasty little bait I'm probably taking too. This is the Scottsboro line through. So that's, that's the line through Scottsboro, and that's a bluegill color right there. So let's do a little comparison. Let's compare Rising Sun 5 inch and the Scottsboro. Rising Sun got that hand poured flat back. It's a lot wider. It's, uh, looking at the tails, the 316's got a lot bigger, fatter tail. Still kind of got that boot tail look to them. On the bottom, 316's got two sets of fins. Scottsboro got this one small set. Now, this one's a line through. I just grabbed the first one. Would you compare the body shape? This has got that. Con traditional Scottsboro mold style just around this is a really good shape lots of fish are caught on this this has got more of that three-dimensional uh, look to it really good looking bait both are going to catch now this one's not line through these I got a rig with a beast hook this is a line through it's going to have a slow sink to it so really like this one if I need to take some of them to Texas too these guys don't understand I'm going to be rolling up to Choke Canyon I might have half the freaking bait room in my truck. I don't know. And we're going to catch him punching a six cents prawn. Dude, St. Crest, glad to have you in here, man. Uh, yep, line through Rising Sun, Joe Don. I didn't know what to buy, so I got the. I figured there's going to be enough grass around. Line through probably wasn't going to be a big deal, but I saw some dude on Facebook catching them on a 6XD. He said out deep at choke, like every cast. So, man, don't tease me with the deep cranking bite. Yes, uh, French Tackle has the same mold as Scottsboro. So does my guys over at Ignite Swim Baits. Um, so. Joe Don, I hope I'm going to go fishing with you for a day. I'm excited, man. Just just pumped about it. Not excited about the drive, but I got new jackhammers coming. Had to bite some braided line. Uh, Hellabass is home. Do you think, uh, guys, would y'all like Hellabass to join the stream, yes or no? I think we're going to get him on. Let me, let me get my Skype going here. Let me get my Skype going. I might ring in oh hella bass. Y'all want to talk some fantasy fishing? If you guys would like to talk some fantasy fishing, let's get hella bass in here. Rich, you better get on Skype. Dude, I would love to call Epic Eric. He is tapped out. I talked to him today. He said, man, I can't tonight. I'm tapping out. 
Dude, uh, me and Royal are going to go fishing. I think him and Ben Milliken are filming a video. So, Royal's channel is fixing to blow up when people see how all that awesomeness. And I think Royal works really hard, dude. He is the king daddy hustler. Makes amazing content. And I really hope that uh, he gets all the subs and views out there. Um I, I like I like him, man. We I send a lot of uh, messages to him, and uh, I respect him. It's crazy seeing a guy that used to be in the chat all the time, and Royal still gets on here, and asking me questions and blowing up like him. That's a dude. That's an awesome feeling, man. And uh, I can't wait to just hang out with him uh, in Texas, go fishing with him. Dude, that that glide was kind of dirty. That glide was kind of dirty, Joe Don. I liked it. I sent Ben a text and said, dude, my pants just got tight. So, Ron, when are we doing the watch party with the old Bassmasters? Uh, let's shoot for uh, next Friday night. Uh, I try to... It's going to be a me and Hella Bass do that. So, All right, Rich. Uh, I'm going to video call you on the Skype. Whoa. All right, we got Hella Bass in here. Let me pull him into the stream. All right, can you guys hear Hella Bass? I'm, well, no, you can't because I hadn't pulled him in here. Testing, one, two, three. What's up, everybody? Can you hear me? We're going to see. I, I got to get you in the stream. Oh, not, not testing, testing yet. <clears throat> oh, I see your mug up here. I see your mug. Let's, see. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to add a background here to this thing and see what? if I can get us Look at me, large, large and in charge. charge. They say they can hear hella bass. He has audio. Whoop. Can't, can hear him, can't see him. Loud and clear. All right, just a second, Hella Bass. I gotta find a good looking image, you know, for the background. <clears throat> I've got the official Hella Bass background somewhere. No, we don't want the. We don't want that one. I'm just going go straight old school black background. Okay, don't hate. I gotta find. I gotta shrink me, you know. There we go. Hello, Bass. You are lit up good, bud. Those lights. Got my fancy TikTok, TikTok light. light. <clears throat> Those from the TikTok best. lights make a difference, man. You are looking good. No homo on that. All right. I think I got me and uh, Rich centered up pretty well here. So there's a little bit of an echo. I don't know if that's true or not. <clears throat> now, that's probably because I need to go get some headphones. So I can try some headphones. Yeah, you go talk and entertain them real quick. Just a second. See if that fixes it. I can fix it. All right, now talk, Rich. What's up, everybody? Is there an echo now? How about testing the echo? A little reverb. Reverb. That's I cool. think you sound good. Everyone, all right, guys, say good now. Stadium voice, that's, that's good. That's all right, good. We all got right. headphones. We got my fancy studio mic working this time. Dude. We're ready to roll. Hella Bass, I'm glad you joined in, my man. Uh, I had to start the stream sometime. I know your kid had hockey, so. All right. We're going to talk some fantasy fishing. Uh, since this is just no, today we're just kind of going to do anything uh, we want to. Didn't really have a topic. Um, let's talk, uh, let's just talk basic picks. If you're putting together a Bassmaster fantasy team, uh, and I'm going to have to pull up the Bassmaster website. Um, here, who uh, who's going to be your pick? And let's explain explain how uh, you're going to pick too, because there's you know different groups of anglers and whatnot. Yeah. So if you've never played fantasy fishing, <clears throat> I'll give you a quick overall here. Um, basically, every tournament they set up five buckets: A, B, C, D, E. Uh, at the beginning of the year, they kind of slot them a little bit on history, a little bit on who they think is going to do well, 
you know, there's some new guys, so they kind of do their best to kind of bucket them. Typically, your A is where your uh, your strongest uh, anglers are going to be, your perennial powerhouses, where some of the local favorites are for the St. John's in this particular uh, scenario. Uh, and then a lot of some of the unknown people, like your nation champs, your open anglers, uh, <clears throat> things like that, they're going to be down in buckets D and E, and the people that maybe didn't make the classic uh, are going to be down uh, lower on the list. And then once after the first event, it basically goes on uh, AOI standings. <clears throat> so the top, essentially about 20, give or take, uh, will be in bucket A. Uh, 21 through 40 will be in bucket B, and so on and so on. Uh, so just because your favorite angler is in bucket B or bucket E in the beginning of the year, uh, depending if they do well or uh, poorly, they can go up or down uh, throughout the season. <clears throat> so you... Uh, I can maybe just uh, turn myself down a tiny bit, see if that works. Um, and <clears throat> you're basically trying to pick the best finisher in each bucket for each tournament. I mean, that's in its simplest form. So you need to pick uh, the cream of the crop in each bucket uh, to score the most points. There's some bonus points for getting the big fish. There's some bonus points for having the biggest bag of the event. There's some bonus points for each day you lead. One of your anglers leads the event. Um I think there's some bonus points for winning, <clears throat> and I think uh, bonus points for getting the exact uh, weight uh, for winning the event. All right, so when you play fantasy fishing, so this is how I used to play fantasy football. I always had two or three absolute locks. You know, I always picked Drew Brees at quarterback. You knew he was going to throw for a bunch of yards and get some touchdowns or, or get Tom Brady. A lot of people don't get quarterbacks early, but I always did in the first three rounds just because I wanted to make sure I had a guy that was going to point up a bunch of numbers. Because running backs get hurt, wide receivers get hurt. Usually a quarterback is going to do you solid. So when you pick fantasy, are you going to pick your hammers first? Like, I'm going to get Mr. Consistent. It's a Florida tournament. You know, I'm going to pick Scott Martin. He's going to be whatever. Or do yeah. you play the, I want to try to pick a couple sleepers that a lot of guys may not pick. Because you know how fantasy goes. Those sleeper guys can get you a lot more points when you're playing against people because they they may have a bunch of common guys in there. Yeah, so you can't actually get more points by picking a sleeper, <clears throat> but you can potentially pass more people, right? Because it's percentages. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, you still whoever gets the most the highest finish in that bucket is going to get you the most points. Correct. Um, so if you pick a sleeper and he bombs, then you're going to lose a lot of ground to a lot of people mm -hmm. if you can pick a sleeper that does well then you can gain a lot of ground um my strategy when i'm picking i typically start at bucket e work my way to the top um I, and i kind of kind of go, go through and do a quick like quick ones through just like gut pick like boom 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 and then i kind of go back and like analyze and do some research and things like that in general i like to have a mix. I don't want all dark horses, right? I don't want all less than one percenters because then there's no way you're going to hit on, you know, the trifecta, right? On five long shots, right? Typically, like if you're betting on horses, right, you're going to have a mix, right? To, to have your best odds. Right. Yeah. See, I got it pulled up <clears throat> so, right here. Uh, what Hellabass is talking about, real quick, I pulled it up on stream. So you got a slot E, uh, D, C, B, Hey, if you've ever played it before, you know exactly what I'm saying. Matter of fact, we're going to pick my team uh, sometime tonight. We'll go through some of this. And I'm going to enter Hellabass's league. And then I'll create my own league tonight after I do my YouTube thumbnails and stuff like that. But you've only got four days from today to get your roster set. Yeah, you got to get it in before they blast off on Thursday morning. So, say Wednesday night to be safe. <clears throat> I see someone um, so here, you can... William says sleeper Matt Robertson. I actually will tell you, if y'all followed Matt Robertson, his big wins have came in Florida. He's got two really good ones in Florida. Yeah, and you can actually sort by percentage. So if you click on those different uh, toggles, you can actually um, you know, sort by different things like the season points, the percentage owned. Um, nope, no Rona, Chris Harney. No, he's got but, to been at the hockey rink all night. Uh, yeah, I got the, the, the Captain Morgan uh, mixed drink in my throat for some reason. Um, but, yeah, I like to mix it up. I don't want all favorites. I don't want to go all chalk. I don't want all long shots. I kind of want to mix it up. I want to try to find some value. 
uh, in those buckets. There is definitely a time and a place to go chalk and go with the favorites. Uh, But the same thing is you want to be sure, because if a favorite bombs, it's just as bad as, you know, uh, a long shot bombing. Because, like, I don't know, maybe not. But it's probably safer to to pick a chalk and, and, and fail than it is to pick a sleeper and fail. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go, let's pick my team. You're going to help me pick the team that beats you. All right? Or, and I would say that, in or, general, if you can find one or two anglers that you can hitch your team to for the majority of the year, it's just trying to pick those out before that everybody else figures them out. Yeah, <clears throat> and kind of like, for a while, like, Todd Faircloth was, like, really good, like, to, back in the day. Um the, the year, like two years ago, a little old lady won the boat, and she pretty much picked Keith Combs every year, every tournament. Now, picking Keith Combs every tournament this past season wouldn't have done you so well. Um, yeah, dude, it's all about, just like fantasy football, the first Alvin Kamara's rookie year, I drafted him like fourth, and people were laughing at me. And y'all know Alvin Kamara took over, and they're like, how, what in the heck? I rode him all the way to the championship you know again i had a good quarterback had drew Brees and camara plus the other guys but man you can get that guy that's hot you get a guy that's going to gun for the angler a year man you can do some damage so oops yeah and my fantasy group uh is private because uh where omnia is giving away some gift cards to our winners so last year we kept on having like the same people would win all the groups. So I'm keeping it to my community. So, but because we share a community, the bait man and I, uh, my password is jigs for pigs. Uh, and I typed it in the chat, uh, all lowercase in the letter four. <clears throat> to be and bait man can, you, can join live and then he can type in the password and show you. So that, you need to get some jigs for pigs apparel. I'm 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 working on it. I got I'm reaching out to some people about getting uh, some some logos designed some things. So I'm gonna start working on uh, doing some of that decals and merch and things like that. Dude, so I'm I got some you, ideas. The guy that did Epic Eric stuff and the guy that did my logo. Those both those guys are really good. So all right, right here. I reached out to go, both of them. <laughs> let's go through this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna place you. Um, I'm gonna put you so we can still see your face while we do these picks. Just give me a second. There you go. This I'm is going to test Bait Man's technology now. This is, uh, Sean, if you win all of it, uh, I think it's like a $5,000 prize pack from Rapla. For the big um, Calabas? No, for the overall. Like, uh, But honestly, get in the Tackle Warehouse League, too, because... Dude, have you seen the stuff They give out win? mad stuff. Like, the guys that finish in the top ten, I mean... They get like two rods and three reels and just piles of like good tackle. Like yeah, it's, it's not like nuts. they're just giving away Guggen baits or well, I don't even say that. It's I mean, it's, it's not, not like, like they're going through the clearance bin. They're giving out juice. I mean, you get yeah. like legit good stuff. I know mm. a guy that uh, he he made the top four or five. I forgot what it was, and dude, it was like fifteen hundred dollars of stuff. I mean, oh yeah, for sure. I would say. Tenth place, worst case scenario, you're gonna get five hundred dollars worth of stuff from Tackle Warehouse. Um, uh, I'm sorry yeah. if it's lagging. I've been chewing my internet people out. So anyway, all right, hello bass. Let's break down bucket slot E right here. So all right, let's sort it by percentage owned. So let's uh, tap on the owner percentage there. That's what I like to do. I get to see what everybody's doing. I want to say Rick Clun's in this bucket, and I think he's dominating the percentage. Yeah, so this is going so, to go uh, back and forth. Uh, Rick Clun at 42%. Kelly J, that's a that's a good pick. Uh, pre-spawn fisherman jerkbait guy. They do eat a jerkbait in Florida, by the way. Um, yeah, there's a couple guys to look at. Um, I mean, our good friend Mark Menendez is getting a fair amount of percentage yep. in here. He's had some uh, good tournaments there. Yeah, and... I, I, you know, I thought about Mark, but I know he's, I'm a little concerned that it may take him a few tournaments to get, yes, get back into fighting form. So he's been fishing him right a lot out of here, gate. but yeah, he's also but just been fishing Tennessee river stuff. There's yeah, a big difference. So, yeah. Fishing the elites. It, it might take you a derby or two to get uh, back to fighting form. So I'd, I want, I would take a wait and see. I mean, if you picked him, there's nothing against that, but I'm taking a wait and see on Mark uh, for the first event or two. Uh, um, Rick Klon, I don't I mean 
could he win? Sure. I don't see him winning a third time there, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go chalk there. Um, I think a couple interesting guys. KG Queen interests me. He actually had a top ten mm-hmm. in a, in the, in the first open last year that Brian knew won. Um, young guy, hungry. Uh, I think Kelly J. What finished like second or third or fourth uh, mm-hmm. last year before he kind of bowed it all. So that kind of I'm interested because like Kelly J. had a really good tournament there last year. Um, he's got definitely some like staging fish pre-spawn, post-spawn, like come and go and thing figured out down there. But then again, he almost missed the whole entire year. So he's not in much different boat than Mark Menendez. So right. he scares me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I think, Cannot uh, pick Lunkers TV. Uh, how about this? Rick Morris. He's a very good bladed jig fisherman. He has had some success down there. I think he did pretty good in the classic mm-hmm. in Florida. Might have been the one. He almost won a classic. Yeah. The one that uh, Luke Lawson won, he was second, I think, wasn't he? Yes. That's a pick that could pay off. It could be terrible. That That's one. Um, and then I look at a guy, Quentin Capo. A lot of people don't know who Quentin is. He's from Louisiana. He fishes the swamps. Florida kind of sets up pretty good for him. Yeah. Um, the only thing that scares me about uh, that thought process is that there's not much grass in the St. John's system. Right. So right you almost now. need so, a little bit of a river guy. Yeah. It's not going to set up like Okeechobee or Harris Chain where you can punch mats, I don't think. So you know um, who I'm going to pick? Although Welcher did okay doing that last year, but I don't know if that's going right. to be the deal. What's so that? Who I'm going to pick? I'm going with Pat Schlapper from Elva, Wisconsin. <laughs> That was my pick. That's who I have on my team. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know, the reason that I'm going to do that is, uh, how do I do this? I hit the button. I hit the button to pick Patch. Hit the plus. I'm Next hitting the to his plus. name. It's not doing it. There we Are go. Are you signed in? There we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm signed in. So the reason I picked Patch Slapper, uh, number one, he's a northern fisherman. Um, he kind of knows what's going on. Um, as far as if there's any kind of grass bite or something like that, um, I'm going to, I don't know how to flop this back to, um, where it's just me and you talking. I think, I tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to put, I'm going to put my little head over here <laughs> on here as well. What's up, Gabe? Except uh, I'm going to put myself spotty. smaller and below hella bass. Yeah, Dad Bod, we can't pick Lunkers. He's not fishing the elites. He's fishing the opens. Um, I will say it would be really crazy if Lunkers TV qualified for the elite series. I think that is a really, really, really small percentage. I'm not going to say zero, but it's never not say very never. much higher. Never say never. All right. All right, hold on just a second. Uh, yeah, I, I picked long Pat long. because he's a. I mean, he's, he's had a lot of success uh, in the cross, Mississippi River. He fished in the current on Pickwick to win the national championship. Um, and he beat the pants off me twice last year, so I figured that's got to count for something. Right. Uh, let me move you all this stuff over so we can, we can... And he qualified in the Eastern, so he had a decent tournament his first event of the year uh, in Florida, so... You know, on Kissimmee or wherever they had their open last year. I'm trying to get this stuff looking good, so they can actually see the names and. So I don't know if you guys noticed, I don't actually have a visor on. I got my a beanie like on. It's so freaking cold in my basement. It's negative 13 outside right now. Dude, I like that. It's so I'll it like says. Uh, you can see it says Smalley Chaser. Dude, is that kind of like the Smalley Spotter sunglasses? You know, from the Googs? I don't know. So this is from Arsenal Fishing. Uh, it's one of their new apparel items. So and they also got a uh, kind of cool. Show this one off here. So you got. Uh... Dude, I like that. I like that. <clears throat> yeah, they're pretty cool. So you, you'll be seeing some of that swag on the streams and videos uh, in the future. Are we ready to pick Bucket D now that we both agreed that Patch Lopper is going to dominate? Yeah, um, I, I agree with what you said. I just think he's on a hot streak right now. Uh, what I know about him um, is that he he's a good, he's just a freaking hammer, and he's kind of yeah. momentum is real, and 
he fished a little bit later in the year than a lot of these guys, and I feel like his rod still might be hot. So, all right, moving on to bucket D. Let's see if anybody stands out here. All there's our boy, my guy, uh, Matt Robertson. Two only 2.6 percent people own Matt. He's won two major tournaments in Florida. And, uh, I mean, how how are you not going to pick him? Well, here's the guy I would if I wasn't going to pick Matt. Um, I'm looking at a guy like Lee Livesey. Mm -hmm. Had some success there in Florida on St. John's. Uh, he's a really good um, pre-spawn fisherman. Does well around kind of the grass stuff like that. Uh, if they move up on beds, I know he's a pretty good sight fisherman, but I don't think this is going to be a bed fishing tournament. Um, it could be. It could gonna, be. The, the forecast is not looking great, but it's not looking bad. It's kind of like 70s, lows in the 50s. Like, it could go. I don't know. It'll be interesting. It's gonna, we'll have to watch that. Um, there's actually a lot of interesting picks in this bucket. I'll give you guys several to look at here and make your own decision. Yeah. They're saying we're uh, lagging. I, I'm sorry for lagging, so... Just one of those things. I just shelled out another forty dollars a month to my internet people, so I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> so, number one, Brian Schmidt. He just won a Toyota Series in Florida. Yep. He's he's a hammer on the title, right? Uh, Chesapeake Bay, Potomac, mm -hmm. grass fishing. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't sleep on him. Uh, Destin Demarion, for years guided out of St. John's, Palatka. Uh, so he's a sleeper. I think Matt Robertson, you can't sleep on him for what we've already talked about. Yeah. Uh, John Cruz, uh, as bad as his year was last year, I finished, I think he was third <clears throat> yeah. or second. He was top 10 last year and he was top 10 the year Clun won. Uh, so, I mean, if he's going to bounce back, I look for him to come out of the gate. He burned me a lot last year. Um, but he's probably one of the best fishermen in this bucket. And then Cliff Prince, I mean, he's like Terry Scroggins uh, 2.0 when it comes to the St. John's River. So uh, there's yeah. – and I think there's a pretty good chance Cliff Prince I tell you who's a good fisherman. Gets he's a blue trophy. Guy. <laughs> Not a lot of guys are going to pick this, but Garrett uh, Packett is a really good okay. stick, and he's kind of coming into his own. Uh, I don't know if he can do it here in Florida, but he's a guy you watch this season. He's going to – he's he's come close. He can be pretty consistent. So, mm -hmm. man, I don't know. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for will, a dark horse. He's probably going to come to my house and kill me if I don't. Uh, Matt Robertson, lock you in. You're my D-pick. All right, let's, yeah. look at, and, uh, uh, let's look at slot C. For those, so if, you haven't read my, if you haven't read my article or watched my fantasy article, so I write a, a pundit column for Bassmaster, if you haven't seen that before. And I also do fantasy videos every week. And I took Cliff Prince. So this is the one bucket I did go chalk on because I think there's a good chance he actually hoists the trophy this year in Placa. Who's that? I'm sorry. Cliff Prince. Oh, yeah. he's uh, You have shrank, by the way. Uh, but that's okay. I'll shrink myself. It's, Make... it's cold. I told you it was cold. <laughs> yeah, my internet. Dude, I just paid Spectrum Internet like 50 bucks a week or two weeks ago to upgrade my internet oh you won't have no lagging on the stream and all this it's like it's like it got worse uh kind of bogus kind of bogus C. <clears throat> yeah we got group c here uh i'm gonna shrink myself too at this point i don't care we're all about the content not our mugs on the video camera so all right i'm looking here uh, who really bumps out from C? Uh, owning percentage wise, Drew Brenton is a, about as good as pick as you're going to get down there. Drew lives in that South Georgia, Florida Georgia line area. He's deadly down there. Um, he can catch them. Um, there's Keith Combs, Mr. Consistent. Uh, Kobe Krieger's a pretty interesting pick. He's got a lot of experience in Florida. Um, Derek Hundle is a guy I've been looking at a little bit. 
kind of flying under the radar. He's he's a good mm -hmm. fisherman, pretty good stick, and uh, maybe Daryl Gleason. The little, little ocean pony <clears throat> action. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple guys I thought about. Uh, Caleb Kufal had a really good first year on the elites, uh, Mississippi River guy. Uh, so I, I like his chances. Uh, if you're looking for a dark horse, I feel like he might have been somebody I mentioned in my uh, pundits picks. Cliff Perch, I could see doing well, the Golden Ram. Um, Kobe Krieger is tempting to be a Florida guy, but his track record in Florida is really spotty. So yes. I would be be weary of going hometown there. Uh, Keith Combs, you know, if he figures it back out and gets going again, I mean, he, he can be deadly. I mean, like, he's a guy that could be in bucket A instead of bucket C. So right. see what, what version of Keith Combs we get this year. Uh, Wes Logan. You know, I mean, he's he's a stick. I was um, did okay about that, last man. year. Wes is a good, good fisherman. So I actually went uh, pretty deep here for my pick. I went way off. I went, I went Josh Strachner. Who? Josh Strachner. You follow a guy. Oh, man. But he actually has done well in a few opens in Florida. And uh, he's just one of those hungry. I mean, you know him from, like, fishing around you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think, you know. I think he uh, he's he made the elites with a purpose, and he intends to to make a splash. So I'm I'm going with a long shot. I don't think many people will pick him, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him do well. Well, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with uh, Wes Logan. I think Wes is a good fisherman. Uh, I think it kind of sets up well for him. I would really uh, I think the Drew Benton pick is kind of your everyone's kind of going to do it. Um, and you know what? That may kill me here, but I think Wes, um, he's kind of got that you follow deal, Gunnersville. He's a good pre-spawn fisherman. I'm going to pick him. Um, Gerald Swindle would be another good one, but, man, Gerald is so inconsistent uh, sometimes. He'll battle for Angler of the Year, but him and Florida don't get along very well. Yeah, I mean, he's had some good ones, but I mean, Florida's like that for everybody, though, to some degree. I mean, for a lot, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of guys have are really up and down. So, all right, on to Group B. This is where things always get tough for me. That last pick was kind of tough. So, all right. Drew Cook is much like Drew Benton, right? Same, same. As like the the two Drews are like twins. They're they're both from that North, the Florida Georgia line, Seminole area. Uh, you know, if you're if you want to go chalk. Both of those are pretty good picks, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I need almost one guy that's not so much kind of a sleeper. I need a guy that's really, really solid. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, it would be hard for me not to pick um, Drew Cook. But I'm going to go I with mean, the you, rookie. You here. went fairly deep on your first three, so I think going Drew Cook here wouldn't be a bad strategy for your team. I really want to but. pick Justin Atkins. Mm -hmm. My guy Justin, I call him Justin Jenkins because he's always catching them bigs. Um, he's a good fisherman, man. He's a really good fisherman. He's very versatile. He can throw a spinning rod. Uh, he can flip. He can pitch. He's good at fishing grass. Uh, Matt Airy's a good, solid pick, too. Didn't have a huge year last year, but you know, Airy can catch him. Yeah, and, he, and he's rooming with Scott Martin this year. Ooh getting them lunkers tv waypoints which by the way <laughs> you can't you can't do that i'm not i'm just that's just a joke uh you cannot do that in the yeah. elite series uh, but scott and matt can talk right because they're yes, both competitors you can know you can share whatever you want to as long as they're in the tournament um so taku ito is can he still ride some momentum yeah i don't know he you know he did well he really excelled in the northern swing, and he really, I felt, fell off when he went back down south. And I don't know if that was just a fall thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have not looked what his track record is like in Florida. I don't really know what Justin Atkins' track record in Florida is. I mean, obviously, he fished FLW for quite a while, so he must have some experience down there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I would definitely go Atkins over Edo from a safe uh, pick standpoint. <clears throat> I'm going to go with Drew Crook. I think a lot of people own yeah, I think him, that's but a it's a very play. solid pick right here. Very solid pick. Yeah. So uh, my super pick. Super nice guy, by the way. Uh, if you're a really nice guy in the fishing industry, uh, good chance I'm going to pick you on a fantasy team. 
If you're a butthole, <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, Mc, Mc, Chris McVeigh, uh, McVeigh official, uh, great. Clint Davis is a sleeper. There's a lot of tournaments I would put Clint in there. Um, he's done okay in Florida, uh, but I think as you start getting later in the year, those uh, into the spawn, any post-spawn tournaments, uh, Clint's going to be a big player in some of those. He had a lot better yeah. year last year on the Elite Series. Had a great class yeah. too. So I mean, if it's a pre-spawn deal and they're among them shell beds, Clint, Clint will catch them up. Oh, yeah. But if it's a, um, you know, if it gets into that spawning deal, he's probably not your strongest horse. So I think that's the one you got to be careful. It's like, you do. It's fun to pick the people you like, but you got to make sure you pick them not blindly. Because I mean, unless you're KBD or you're a superstar, you know you're going to have your ups and downs throughout the year based on your strengths, right? So just Absolutely. be realistic with the guys that you really like. Um, I mean, it's like we both really like Mark Menendez, but we're going to take a wait and see approach to see how he comes out of the gate after yeah. a year off, right? And I'll we're be pulling honest, for he's him. My friend, we're just not, not picking him yet. <laughs> Uh, uh, Justin Taylor so says Matt Airy has back-to-back top tens there. Sure, I believe that. Uh, so I went with Brian New. Brian New, ooh, that's a good pick, man. It's a good pick. I think he's a, a good up-and-coming fisherman. I won't say he's like brand new. Get it, brand new. But he, uh, man, he can catch him. Yeah, I, I would would not I would be surprised if he's not rookie of the year. <laughs> yeah, um, guys, if this is on Bassmaster.com, it's free to sign up. After I get all these picked uh, and my buckets, I will join Hellabass's group. Um, well, we'll, you, we'll just walk you through it right on the stream, and we can just sure, show everybody how to do it. A, an on-screen demo. All right, Group yeah. A, right here. Uh, whew. This is where it gets. I mean, you can't hardly go wrong in this bucket. John Cox. I mean, uh, John's a solid pick. Scott Martin. Mm, I'd like to pick him too. Um, how about Jason Christie? Uh, I think Christie. Christie Hackney. Christie mm. Hackney. Um, fighter. Um, going off the wall. I'll tell you a good pick. If you just want to say, I've got solid picks for EDC. Brock Mosley is a pretty good pick. He's been fishing pretty good the uh, last few tournaments. Mm -hmm. I don't know his track record in Florida, but I feel like he's done okay down there. We also have Kyle Welcher. YouTube uh, fisherman. Actually, he was a pro that started YouTube, and he's blown up. And so, shout out to Kyle. He's proven that. I mean... You can do both and I be think successful. A really good value. <clears throat> I think Patrick Walter is top ten in his two St. John's tournaments here. Right. At four percent. Canterbury, uh, he can be pretty good down there. Um Ruben with Scott and Matt. Yep. Uh let's see well, if here. It's, if it's a pre spawn thing, I wouldn't sleep on Buddy Gross. Yep. Buddy Gross is one. Uh was it Harris Chain, I believe? On Scott's like It was either Kiss Me or Harris. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and this is at St. John's. Um uh, I really want to pick Jason Christie. I feel like if it ends up being any kind of a flipping deal, he's gonna be hard to beat. Um I feel like he can catch him offshore if he has to. If there's any kind of spinnerbait bite there. Rick Klein won yeah. twice on a Spinnerbait. Spinnerbait. And a gator tail worm. For whatever reason, if I'm going to pick the two returning veterans of the chip, for whatever reason, my gut tells me Hackney over Christie, but I think they're both dangerous here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely don't want to overlook Welcher. If there was any kind of a frog bite, uh, I think I'd put Welcher there. He's he's a great frog fisherman. And we saw what he did last year, man. Uh, old school fishing style. I'm going to go with my gut. That's who, that's who I went with. I'm going with my gut. Don't let me down. Don't fish like the fake ones. Give me Jason Christie from Park Hill, Oklahoma. There you go. All right. Yeah, and I, I I took Welcher. I'm like he was super strong for me most of last year, all through the fall swing. So I'm just gonna ride him into 2021 and, and keep that momentum. I see, just keep seeing that 10 pounder that he caught flipping uh, in my dreams. So. 
All right, tiebreaker is set. How much weight for the full tournament in pounds and ounces will the winner catch? Yeah, I think this is something you really want to watch what this weather looks like. <laughs> uh, I mean, if it's warm, we're probably talking low to mid 80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it gets cold, there's a wind front and it gets, low then we're 60s. talking 60s, 60, 60 to 70 pounds probably. Yeah, this is, uh, and, and guys, just because I locked them in, uh, I can, as long as I get this before the deadline, which is, I believe, what is that, the 10th or 9th? Uh, I believe February 10th. I can change anything I want to. But if I change it, and don't forget to change it back, I'm locked in. So I'm going to go 77 pounds. Yep. Got to hit the ounces. save button. Ian you know, O'Connell does not automatically button. save. You have to hit save. Top <laughs> record saved. So... I think that's safe for now. I can put that in. If I forget about my tiebreaker, I think I should be okay. They could, if it takes 81 pounds, I'm not too far off. Um, yeah. If it's tough, even on a cold front, hell bad, somebody could catch almost 80 pounds. Oh, yeah. Because even like if the cold front doesn't show up till late, right? Somebody could freak show it on the first day and catch 36 oh, pounds, right? <clears throat> absolutely. So. Um, now we're going to go join Halabas's group. So from right here, uh, I go, so you go to, up to the top and click groups, fantasy fishing groups, yep. join to, or group. create a group. <clears throat> yep. And all you got to do so is another I thing, can... I think, I don't know if I, I wasn't paying attention if Fritz has been pulled from the bucket, but I don't know if you guys heard that Fritz is kind of fighting the COVID. Right. And uh, he's going to miss at least the first tournament, if not the first two. Beat so, Hellabass. So you'll click on that once. Is beat Hellabass. So it's a, it's a private group. <clears throat> We're the largest private group in the whole system. Here's the password. Jigs for pigs. <clears throat> Jigs for pigs. All lowercase. If you're on your mobile phone, your mobile phone will try to capitalize the J. You'll have to main, make sure it's not capitalized. Thank you, Hella Bass, for being an awesome moderator. Post message <laughs> to your board. So I am now in Hella Bass's group. 424 so, people up in here. <clears throat> wow. Now. So, so make sure. As I was say, make sure you join. Or you're probably going to create your group right now, so we can all flood yeah, in there. We'll create a group right now on Bassmaster.com. <clears throat> um. Group name, I don't want to do Beat Bait Man. Uh, no, Bait Man's... Just so it should be Jaint, Jaint theme? No. Uh, Is that going to be a Jaint, Jaint group? Jaint group, no. Uh, I want to keep it kind of uh, normal so people can find it. Uh, so, uh, Bait Man... Bait Man's Buddies? <laughs> no. Group name <laughs> is... Uh, um, go balls. <laughs> no, yeah, UK Tennessee sucks. Uh, fantasy fishing. Uh, let's see. Let's just keep it simple. Uh, bait man. Uh, the the bait man's baits. No. Oh, master. Okay, come on, chat. Let's let's earth. go to the chat. Come on, guys. Why is my chat doesn't feel like it's? How about the master? The chat could baiter. come up with something better. The soul of Jason Christie will enter Jason Christie and he'll forget how to work a sexy talk. Wow. Something with Shart. Um, I got it. We'll call it, the group name will be Buzz Baiters. How about that? It's either, ba- Bait it's either Bateman's... D- Dustin. Bateman Box. Bateman's Box. Nah. Um, Jason says Master Baiters. That's... The low-hanging fruit. How about Master Bateman? <laughs> Master Bateman. I got it. I, I got it. A... To steal off jigs for pigs, baits for Janes. There, I like that. Baits for Janes. Baits <clears throat> for Janes. Uh, group motto. Uh, okay. Uh, this is going to be... This group uh, based off the Bait Man T 
TV YouTube channel Beat the Bait Man. Whatever. I'm not going to get too fancy. Uh, we're going to do a public group. I'm not worried about it. I think at this point, yeah, feel public. I'm not going to worry about it. Image, group message. Uh, thank you guys all for joining. I wish you all the best of luck. If you haven't, subscribe to my YouTube channel, the comma, the bait, bait TV. Every week, hopefully, gotta add that in there, Rich, aka Hella Bass, will be jo <laughs> joining me for a fantasy fishing preview as well as I'll just leave that there um you writing a book yeah we're gonna do them uh, what some let's watch too so uh, I'm going to Texas so it's gonna be hard to do that uh, but uh, fantasy fishing preview on my channel uh, winner of each week will receive a prize just... TBD the winner overall uh, I'll give them a hundred dollar <laughs> gift card to six cents fishing and uh, I think I'll throw something else in um, and a hundred and fifty I'll give them $100 to sixcentsfishing.com and also Tackle Warehouse. How about that? Wow. <laughs> Overall, Ryan Thiel says no one, no one reads season. all that. <clears throat> hey, man, uh, you can thank uh, Uncle Joe for that. I, I feel like he's going to come through with those extra checks for us. It's probably going to say you've exceeded the character limit when you hit safe settings. <laughs> I did what? Well, it'll be interesting to see if it says you've exceeded the, the the character message. Like, I don't know. So Save the settings is, so we can uh, get in there. The Fantasy Baits for Jaints, uh, created by Bateman Baxter. Um, but yeah, I'll probably go ahead and purchase them gift cards like now. That way I don't forget about it. Um, so that's for the overall winner. Uh, and you know what? I'll get with some other companies and whatnot. Dude, I'll just start pulling stuff off my shelf and giving uh, stuff for a uh, random box of stuff for a winner each week. So how about that? You know what I mean? I've been blessed yeah. to get a lot of free stuff. Uh, it could be six cents. You might get, hey, I got some Rapalas here. I got to overstock on them. You can have those. So I got Ignite Swim Baits. All right. um, missile yeah. Baits. Five members already. We're growing fast. We already got five. Dude. Everybody pour in. I got tons of net bait to give away to guys. Um. Maybe I can so find thing, some mega so bass. If uh, if there's anything breaking news, I usually try to post it to my Instagram stories like right before. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, hella bass, need some last minute tips. That's also I usually keep my fingers on the pulse. Like if there's a cancellation or somebody has to drop out or anything weird, somebody has a baby, I try to keep all that stuff fresh on the on the IG stories. So <clears throat> I have successfully figured out how to make myself go away. <laughs> all right i'm back i'm bringing us back in i've took the fantasy fishing off there so um yeah so what i want to do on friday nights and it didn't work out this friday because i had some things going on um uh, is i want to do the Bassmaster. let's watch we'll pick a i'll pick a random tournament and uh me and hella bass to kind of commentate like we're you know mark zona and davy height whoever and uh, we're gonna go through those old tournaments. I'm kind of, I'm probably gonna let Hella Bass watch beforehand. I'll tell him what we're gonna watch so we know what to talk about. Um, I can't so, decide. Will there be sound or will it just be us? Yeah. So basically, <clears throat> it'll be playing in the background. I'll run the desktop audio. You'll be able to hear in the mm -hmm. background. Uh, and before anybody asks, guess it's legal to do this. Uh, I can't monetize it because. I don't own the content. Bassmaster does, but I am allowed to critique and 
do and make commentary on it uh, and it's actually legal to do that um, but I can't monetize it with ads it's a uh, like Freedom of Information Act or something like that. I forgot what it is. So, can but, I show uh, some baits? Huh? Can I show some baits? Yeah, show some baits, man. I went skinny on the baits this time. So, shout out to Gabe Tin Horse Monty. He had uh, you, you know Bag Five Baits. Uh, yeah, Mike, man, Mike Russell. Russell. He literally lives like down the road from me. <clears throat> so he was on Gabe's stream. <clears throat> had a little contest, <clears throat> and it was like guess the number of jerk baits in this box and like there was all these random things and like i like nailed every question <laughs> because i'm a bait junkie but uh so i won some of his baits so i got them sent up so one of them this one just three quarter ounce uh red eye shad and a crawdad pattern i'm actually giving this one away dude so he makes he paints some one. wicked stuff man what's that he paints wicked stuff yeah so like I don't know how well that's showing, but that he said he's he's known for his crawdad. So this is one of his crawdad patterns, and it's pretty sick. So if you want to win this one, check out my stream with Debo from last Wednesday. Go pop a comment on it, and uh, this is up for grabs. Um, that's hot. You know, I, I'd like so to actually go to Mike Russell's house and do a stream, or, or a stream, or just like uh, a walkthrough, right? Like a uh, kind of like that'd be kind of cool. His paint Booth ain't too much bigger than my bait room. It's sure. crazy. But just uh, to like go on like see his blanks and like yeah. So then I also got this 5XD in blue glimmer. So that's a color he's painted for a decade that's been uh, absolutely fire in the fall here on Kentucky Lake. That's It's a very natural looking color. But the way the light shifts yeah. around that white, it turn like a bone yellow. Uh, it's just a perfect blue glimmer. Great shad imitator. Yeah, and the one thing cool about him, he's got access to actual striking baits. These aren't yeah. knockoffs. Yeah, they're the actual. He's OEM. painting them on actual striking baits. And even back Man. in the day, when he first started, he was literally buying full price baits off the shelf and repay them because he did not want to do the blank deal and then i've got this i think a flat 1.5 and a 2.5 and i think they call this pb and j so there's are, some purple in it pb and j crawl is really good man uh, wiggle wart guys buy the snot out of that well i got this one hung in the bag so that's awesome the hooks are good i can verify that hunter nixon you're correct matter of fact i got the idea from danny b talks he's a great dude by the way so it's actually, instead of a black back, it's kind of a dark purple, right? Yep. And then you got them crop patterns, and then you got that purple. And the, his fades and his transitions are, are pretty money, to be honest. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> he, uh, you know, he was a tattoo artist before he uh, ever painted a bait. That's cool. Yeah, he's a good dude. I enjoyed watching him. So Bag 5 Baits, I think he has a website. I think his Instagram also is where he posts most of his recent pictures, so... Yeah. Shout out um, to Gabe, Tin Horse Monty. Shout out to, to Mike Russell. Some cool stuff. Yeah, Mike's a good dude, man. I've There's been nights where like I'm bored and don't have nothing to do, don't have to work, and I just go over his paint booth and just talk to 3 o'clock in the morning. He's also a big heavy metal nice. fan. so. <laughs> nice. He's a good dude. So, uh, I'm going to wrap it up because it's late. I'm glad you joined Halibas. Uh, so... Like I said, uh, make sure you guys join the Bassmaster Fantasy Group. I'll put a link to that on my Instagram and fa- Facebook. Chris, appreciate you winning the giveaway. Did a little talk. Uh, give Scottsboro Tackle some love for me, guys. Go order you some 316 baits. They're only like, dude, it's cheap. Uh, shipping and everything on those three baits was like less than $50. Um, what else? Uh, shout out Tackle Warehouse. Get, I'll get some links uh, to some of to this right here um, and yeah but uh, look for some videos this week I'm gonna do a non live tackle warehouse unboxing when it comes in I got some cool stuff I think you guys that might be interested in there's a lot of bladed jigs in this thing so um, nice. hella bass if you're not subscribed to his channel go subscribe over there great dude but we will be doing a fantasy preview right before each tournament uh, before the deadline. So we're going to try hard on that. And 
let me know so in the can... comment section after the video anything you guys want to see from the channel we'll try to get it in here yeah we might have to sneak those in like midday or weird like they might not be the regular <clears throat> prime time ones they might have to sneak some extra ones in so yeah we it, it, and here's the deal, because of our work schedule and everything, me and Hella Bassman had to collaborate offline to make some of these fantasy previews. Um, could do that. And I could put some cool graphics up there and whatnot instead of looking at uh, my ugly soul all the time. So, um, Anyway, thank you, Tim Horse Monty. Uh, Dustin Taylor said the Blues suck, uh, which I kind of agree with that. Uh, I'm a hockey fan. I like the Sharks. They're absolutely terrible, just like every you, sports team I root for. Do, do you got a? Do you got a, Did you talk? Is there a Super Bowl pick? I, I didn't hear that. Did you talk Super about Bowl that earlier? Super Bowl pick? Uh, yes, I'm going with the Chiefs. I think I'm pulling for the Bucks, but I think the Chiefs are going to win. If How's Tom that? Brady went on the Bucks, I'd pull for them. Yeah. I mean, he is the best quarterback that's ever played the game, and I'm a Peyton Manning fan. I'm just not a fan of the dude. I'm coming around though. I'm coming around. I feel like a, I don't just like I just like him less now that he's not a patriot. Right. Right. 